from uh, MySpace users, uh, all friends of Livid Records, and I'm sure uh, friends of the queers on uh, MySpace, which has turned right. into this okay. great phenomenon. Uh, okay. Uh, Bo Brains, that's the gentleman's name, he's a huge uh, queers fan. Uh, writes, was there ever a moment when the queers were in danger on a tour? If so, what happened? In danger? Yes. Oh, man. You know, like danger, danger, like the planes going down or any weird <laughs> shit like that. No. No, Leonard Skinner? <laughs> no, nothing like danger, danger. You know, unless it was skinheads trying to fucking maybe fuck with us, but then we'd always gang up and they never did much to us. We were always off their radar screen, skinheads radar screen. I probably in danger, like, I don't know if they mean in danger of breaking up or whatever, but, you know, mainly when we're fucked up on drugs, maybe, or drinking. Yeah. That would be the only time you're in <laughs> danger, danger, really, but we didn't, didn't feel the danger. <laughs> Things were uh, fine. Old Man, which we both know and love on MySpace, uh, says, Hi, Joe. Uh, hi. Joe told me that he will be back in New Hampshire in February if everything goes well. He may take another trip to Anne Marie with his brother Jordy to go on to go off a few days that's, offshore that's, fishing. That's, that's Willie. Yes, correct. Yeah. His daughter runs the uh, internet radio show. Oh right, right, right. Yeah. When you see him, just tell him being here sure beats being off at Parker's picking crabs with Johnny Rosa. Yeah, no, no. Willie used to come out. He's a cool, cool guy. He's pretty funny. He used to come out on my brother's boat and he would steam, you know, we'd put him at the helm and he'd steam because it was like 12 hour ride out and steam it out, take a watch on the way out and then cook for us and shit. We'd be out there about three days and then, and then he'd take the watch on the way in so we could sleep because you're up fucking morning, you know, you're up 18 hours a day and shit. So yeah. Willie, yeah, he's pretty funny guy. <laughs> Willie, yeah, uh, he was in the Merchant Marines, and he, he would fucking told me some funny shit, man, about being out there. I mean, I had a fucking corpsman, which is the doctor called Dr. Jekyll. Yeah. <laughs> He's always full of shit like that. I think Willie at one point was actually trying to seriously get me to promote his uh, political campaign. He was running right. for something. Yeah, uh, I saw him. Yeah, he was running Congress for... Congress or Senate or... Was, yeah, something like or that. something, but yeah. he, they, he came in. He told me he's honest. He's like, I came in 26th out of 26. I go, well, <laughs> hey, that's you know, sure in. Next time we'll get my name behind you, Willie. You're right. It's right. <laughs> yeah, I was in the rain, so it's pretty amusing. Um, okay, uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get this name wrong, but it's Elise Mayo. Uh, ask, uh, th these are my space names. I guess I'm just wondering when you guys were teenagers, did you think. Uh, where did you think you'd be in 10 years? Oh, God. I was probably smart enough to not even look ahead. I had no clue where the hell I'd end up. You know, I didn't want to work a regular job, so I don't know. The band thing kind of took off when we got on lookout. The band wasn't a full-time job. I mean, I owned a restaurant, and I was loved cooking, and I, I was going to just stay there's actually, the so. there's actually a question about that in here. Uh, Somebody, uh, so in 10 years, I don't know. I don't know. Me too, Lou Wimpy. I don't know. We had a somewhat fatalistic attitude, I think. I don't know. We <laughs> didn't know where we'd end up, but we knew it wasn't going to be pretty. So <laughs> this is kind of like very nice to be able to play music at least, the, you know, this long. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Horse, Horsey, or Parisi, asks, What's more queer? I thought this was actually a really good question because this <laughs> is pretty random. What's more queer, the New York Dolls or Iggy Pop getting arrested in a dress? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about a toss up. I would say probably Iggy getting arrested in a dress. Yeah, he lives down here. He's always down here just at, at Churchill's. Actually. Iggy is, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's, he's one of the true punk rockers, I think, really, you know. That was stuff I grew up on. But uh, the dolls, I yeah, I love the dolls too. I never saw the dolls. Um, I saw Sil Sylvain and Johnny Thunders many times, but I never saw the dolls. That was after my time. I think I saw Joe Hansen once or twice too. Yeah. They're always good and stuff. But yeah, Iggy I, I would, is more of an influence on me than the dolls. But, yeah. yeah. But anyway. <laughs> so he's the queerest of the two? I guess I was. <laughs> In this <Yeah>. situation. <laughs> He also asks, uh, how do you feel about the influx of punk rock culture on modern pop culture? Example, Paris Hilton in the Ramones t-shirt and punk rock aer uh, aerobics. 
Yeah, it's just a gimmick, really. Money has ruined the whole thing, I think. So it's kind of, they treat it like this retarded, you know, punk rock is this retarded offspring that, you know, you kind of, Johnny's going through a phase, so you have to kind of tolerate it with a slightly amused thing, but, and they'll, you know, move on. Um, I don't know, it's all... Like who is that stupid chick that really sucks? A Avril. Avril Lavigne. Yeah, yeah, she's got a little. She's great. Shirt. You know, I've said it before. I said it in that interview. You know, yeah. to me, the the Ramones are a clothing line now. Yeah. People don't <laughs> understand. You know, the the great impact of the Ramones and, and all that great stuff that they, they taught us to to laugh at, you know, laugh at yourself and don't take yourself so serious and all that stuff. That was the Ramones message, you know, and uh, all that stuff just makes me cringe, but. I don't know, it's like a mosquito bite and you slap it away and it's gone and really I don't deal with yeah. that bullshit. But it, it's kind of gross, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. We did cover a lot of that in the first interview, yeah. by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Chad Riley asks, and this is the gentleman, uh, he first contacted me actually about this J. Church Lance uh, Oh, Chad got it together. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, nice guy. And I basically told him I'd... At the time, financially, there was no way I could release this on my own. Oh, right. Um, I told him, you know, whatever you need. If you need $1,000, let me know, and I'll, you right. know, I'll find a way to get it for you. Right. Because it's a really good cause. Right. He asks, uh, hey, Chuck, ask Joe how he feels about helping out with the Lance Hahn a benefit CD. He recorded the song about the she for the comp. He also got his partners in crime, the Groucho Marxists, on board as well. All proceeds are going toward Lance's future kidney transplant and medical bills. Great. Uh, thanks again, Chuck, for pointing me in the right direction. And uh, this is a really good benefit, uh, by the way. I'm sure you know this. This is yeah. This has turned into a really huge thing, actually. Yeah, he was. He did a good job too, because I was only to you know I, I when I hear st about stuff like that. Um, another buddy, Paul Delano, um, had a bad medical thing and up in Boston and I'm only too happy to lend you know what little clout and voice we have behind stuff like that I, I think that's not to sound like a hippie but I think that's the great thing about music when when people can rally and help other people you're doing you that know, cystic like, fibrosis thing too I mean, right you know, that, that's the important shit. stuff in life it's yeah. not how many assholes show up with a fucking mohawk and you know yeah. all that and get drunk and beat people up to me it's just you know I so I like doing stuff like that and Chad did a really good job because you know he was he would really I know what a pain in the ass it is I'm doing a tribute album and um and it's hard getting stuff in from people from the bands that are it's not because they don't want to help it's because they're busy you know yeah. and yeah. and you know I told them right when we would have the deadline and oh, I found out when the deadline was and I told them right when we'd have the tune in and then Chris Chris Pierce from Doc Hopper, his band's a grouch at Marxist. We recorded at his studio, Technical Ecstasy, where I'm thinking about doing the next Queers album. And um, and so he jumped in and he was only too happy to help. So I, I think that's great, yeah, good luck, you know. It, yeah. I mean, there, but for the grace of God, yeah. no I, I don't know, I might be yeah. next, so I'm only too happy to fucking help that. So. Yeah, it's really I didn't, I'll be honest with you, I didn't know Cringer as much. Jay Church, I, I kind of went through a phase where I listened to him, and I didn't listen to him in a long time, and um, yeah. Lance has quite a story though. You know, he played back and stuff. I mean, it's just an yeah. unbelievable. Line. I remember first hearing them back when they were they did a split seven inch with a discount uh, uh, a long time ago. Yeah, and and Allison from Discount had a phenomenal voice. Yeah, I remember when I was when I first got into punk rock and I was listening to you know you guys and you know Lisa Marr and uh, Cub Buck. Whatever, <laughs> whatever name they were going on right. at the time, uh, Allison uh, and uh, you know Lisa Marr were basically my, you know, my idols in yeah. female punk rock uh, singing yeah. uh, thing. Lisa's Lisa's awesome. She's yeah. on the new Queers album. Yeah. She, oh, she graciously flew out and helped. And I don't know if the album would have got made without her and my buddy Mike from um, Atlanta. They really helped. Lisa, I want to. Um, I want to do a pop thing and stop playing some of this bass stuff. I want to get a keyboard player and Lisa and bass player that can sing and like really do all these vocal stuff and play all the pop stuff like From Your Boy. I mean, these guys don't know how to play From Your Boy. Yeah. So the drummer fucking played it too fast. He's trying, but I want to do all that. I've got a big response from the, a good response from people I've talked to about doing that. So, uh, this is on, on a side note, actually. You bring something interesting. Uh, 
Chris Fields, <laughs> and we're not going to get too in, in deep with Chris Fields. Uh, I interviewed him uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. And uh, this is back when I guess the Dwarves were releasing Come Clean or recording that album. Uh, wow. And that was about the time they left the tour. And, and, and his main complaint was that you guys weren't playing any of the slower songs. Ironically enough, you know, now you have this lineup for. Yeah. They're great guys. Uh, Jeff's a phenomenal guy. Uh, the drummer is, what, 20? For the Dwarves? No, that's touring with you now. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Jeff's no, 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 good. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I'm playing yeah, with him, yeah. yeah. I mean, Chris, he'd probably. It's, you know, if I played all the Wimpy stuff, he'd. Or I played all the pop stuff, he'd say, How come you don't play anything by Wimpy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, well, not I, the pleasing Mr. Like Chris so, Fields. And no. that's coming from me, not from Jeff. No. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, I want to do it, so we'll see what happens. But, I mean, I'm not going to play through Marshall amps. I'm going to play through smaller amps and shit. But I'm kind of looking forward to doing it. You know, that's kind of moving ahead and doing something different, which I tried to do on the new Queers album. Not that this interview is about the new Queers album. But I try to, I think that a lot of bands, I hear big stuff about... You know this band and that band, and I really think you got to move ahead with the music, like on some stuff in the new album. Brian Wilson, me and Lisa wrote or this song. I think she's starting to like me. I'm very proud of that stuff because it's moving ahead musically. It's it's from a guy that you know started with kicked out of the Eagles and this place sucks all the way over here. And I'm really psyched about that. I think a lot of bands just go through the motions and they hop around and all that bullshit. But you know most of the songs. I think pop punk stuff, you know, people ask why pop punk isn't that big, and I go, because not many people, bands do it good, and they're not, you know, to me, like, the best one out there now is is the Methadones, I think, really, I was, you know, Vapid's a great songwriter, Ben's doing a solo album, which will be great, so, a lot, you know, to sit down and write, you know, some song about the fucking, going to the prom with your girlfriend, and she gets drunk and fucks a jock, and I'm bummed out, it's just so boring to me, you know, I mean, I could do it, but... I could sit on the toilet and write shit like that fucking yeah. in the morning, you know, three tunes better than this crap I hear in a lot of those pop punk yeah. albums. I think know. that's a, I think that's a really You know, I yeah. mean, I, I'm not naming names, but there's some bands yeah. I'm waiting for them to like really come out and grab me by the balls and, you know. But I ran in the, uh, luckily I ran, we ran in the company of the Muffs and MTX and Screeching Weasel and those are your peers, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, fuck, you gotta step up to the plate and do something. Yeah. I can't fucking write some bullshit like So Cool or something like fucking Teenage Bottle Rocket. I mean, that's cool and all that, but back then it wouldn't cut the mustard, you know what yeah. I mean? You were yeah. running MTX, fuck, doing gun crazy and well, what, what, sells, uh, Love is Dead. That was a different fucking level, that shit, yeah. you know? So I still hold a lot of bands to account, you know, that level, but I don't know. I think you should, and, and a really interesting thing, and this is also from the first interview, was the uh, the Jesus and Mary Chain uh, yeah. element and things like that. Uh, yeah, that's me awesome. personal, my personal opinion, this isn't, you know, whatever, this is just me. Yeah. As a musician myself, uh, I think that'd be a good thing, you know. Yeah, did I tell you I, I had I sent a demo really... to Jim? I had sent a demo, a song I did to Jim, and he... He emailed me a few times and he's gonna. I asked him if he'd help me with the song and he said he would. He's just really busy. He's doing a solo thing, Jim Reed. Yeah, yeah, from, yeah. He's from so he wasn't big enough to, you know, to, to email me back yeah. with his personal email. I just thought it was awesome. One of my heroes, you know. Yeah. I mean, before I get out of this foul business, I'd love to be able to say I wrote a song with him, you know. Yeah. So uh, I, I just, I still listen to them all the time. I was just driving out of Atlanta at 3 in the morning because I was burned after the show and I wanted to get home for one night. Yeah. And listen to Jesus and Mary Chain, just going over stuff. His solo stuff's great. That stuff inspires me. And sometimes yeah. I listen to it. I want to go move ahead and and go on to great, great pop stuff. Yeah. And um, not that I would do great stuff, but just move. It inspires yeah, me. Yeah. I guess I'm saying, you know. Ian, Ian McKay currently took that that road. He's uh, doing a solo bit with with uh, mm -hmm. female uh, singer and. Yeah. Uh, they were basically touring, and he's known, you know, yeah. Minor Thread and all this stuff, but yeah. he's doing what he loves to do now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. I think it'd be a good thing for you. I really do. Yeah, I, I admire that. I don't know him, but, um, I, yeah, I like to move on to other stuff. I think we get a big response, but at any rate, yeah, some of the bands, I think, could just really branch out. It's so easy to do some of this crap and, and get good production and all that, but, I mean, really, you know, I... It, when Dookie came out by Green Day, now there's an album that grabbed you by the balls, you know? Yeah. It was like, wow, man, fuck. 
Yeah. You know, and, and, and if those are your peers, Green Day and Screeching Wings on the Moss and MTX, you know, I flatter myself, I'll say the queers, you know, then you're going to fucking have to step up to the plate because all your other shit, you, you ain't going to cut, you're going to be the Connie Dungs of your generation, you yeah. know what I mean, if you yeah. write that crap, or you would have back then. Yeah. You know, so, I, I don't know if I'm making sense, but. Uh, it makes perfect so. sense for, uh, to me as a musician. So, I don't know. But. All right, I've got two more questions from you from Vans. Uh, how do you describe your music for an audience that has never listened to your music? Do you, ever do you ever try to target a new generation to help bring new life to your music? No. I don't target a new generation. I'm not trying to make it in this. I don't give a fuck anymore at all. That's from I mean, I do Tonic give a Queens. fuck, but I'm not going one fucking inch out of my way to go sell a fucking album, another CD to a jock. Yeah. You know, fuck that bullshit. I mean, I want to sell albums, but I'm not going to go whore my pimply ass to go... So listen, a lot of bands... And they're popular, would crawl through shit up to their neck for a mile to sell one more CD. You know, they'll open up for fucking bands they got no business opening up for. Um, I don't know. I mean, a lot of them just, I wouldn't do that. I see like some bands, you know, we turned down tours with Horton Heat and Social Media and all that. Not that I think we're better. I think I said, talked about you. Yeah, we that. talked about But it's just, I don't see us fucking singing Ursula finally as tits and fucking. You know, selling albums and, and like no effects. I don't care about that. I mean, I don't like that audience too much anyway. It's too jockey, jock sniffer like. Yeah. So I don't give a fuck about those guys anyway. Usually people that get the queers like, you know, aren't into a lot of that crap. So um, so I ain't going out of my way to do anything. And one of those bands, I don't know who it was. I think it was MXPX. Great guys. I really used to like a lot of their stuff. And I think they're a good band. Uh, and I saw they were out on tour with someone, I can't remember who it was, and I felt bad that they were out. It wasn't like Rise Against Eve, it was some fucking stupid, uh, run out of tape. Some stupid, I, I, it was just like, God, I never fucking want to go open up for, for whoever they were opening up for. I was like, damn, man, it, you know, I just <laughs> like doing shit like this, so. You know, I, I don't do, I, I don't fucking... I ain't trying to make it into this, fuck that, you know. Okay. Is that how we're on the tape? Cut it. One minute. Okay. No. Really quick. Chi G. Okay. What do you think of the crumbs? And do you remember recording that? The crumbs? They were a great right. band. They were oh, a great I just band. Brought a bunch of <laughs> you're paying me. Thank you, sir. <laughs> crumbs are great. Chuck Loose, I I miss Chuck. He was the one I knew and and Rafe, um, he was here last time. I put him on the guest list tonight. I didn't see him, but no, I used to love the Crumbs. Some of their early stuff was just awesome. Yeah. Great guys, real punk rock and shit. They were fun. They really meant it too, man. They were great guys. <laughs> All right, um, I had a quick couple questions. Uh, yeah. Monkey Brain, your new record. Uh, 